In this first part, we will explore historical facts that raise questions about the existence of Jesus Christ as a historical figure. Although many believe in his existence, there is a series of arguments and evidence that skeptical scholars present to challenge this notion. From the absence of contemporary records to inconsistencies in the accounts of the Gospels, these issues provoke intense debate. By examining these points, we seek to understand the historical and cultural context in which these ideas arise and the impact they have on the understanding of the figure of Jesus and the history of Christianity. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell to receive new episodes. The absence of contemporary references to Jesus is one of the arguments that some scholars and critics use to question the historical existence of this figure. Basically, the idea is that considering the importance attributed to Jesus in Christian accounts, one would expect there to be written records about him made by historians or writers who lived in the same time and region where he supposedly lived, such as first century Palestine. However, there are no known historical accounts that directly mention Jesus during the period he is believed to have lived, especially in texts by non-Christian writers. A notable example of this silence is Philo of Alexandria, a Jewish philosopher and historian who lived 20 years before Christ and 50 years after Christ. Philo was a contemporary of Jesus and wrote extensively about the culture, religion, and events in Palestine, the region where Jesus is believed to have conducted his ministry. In his many writings, Philo addressed themes such as the lives of the Jews, their relationship with the Roman Empire, and even described events in Jerusalem and the actions of Roman governors in the region. However, there is no direct mention of Jesus or the events reported in the Gospels, such as the crucifixion, miracles, or the social unrest that was supposedly caused by his preaching. For skeptics, this absence of mentions is significant as they expect that a man who would have attracted large crowds, performed miracles, and confronted religious and Roman authorities, culminating in a public execution, would have drawn the attention of observers outside the Christian community. The absence of references to these events, particularly in a context where there were writers attentive to the political and social dynamics of the region, raises doubts about the existence of a figure with the impact described in Christian texts. However, it is important to understand some factors that may help explain this absence of contemporary records. First, first century Palestine was a peripheral region of the Roman Empire, and for many of the Roman writers of the time, local events were not sufficiently relevant to be documented. Jesus himself, in Christian accounts, appears as a marginal figure in the context of Roman political power, which might justify the lack of interest from Roman chroniclers in him. Furthermore, most of the events of Jesus' life described in the Gospels were transmitted orally for many years before being written down, and Christianity only began to gain significant visibility in the Roman world a few decades after his death, primarily with the work of Paul of Tarsus. Another point to consider is that the earliest written records about Jesus, such as Paul's letters in the Gospels, were produced by his followers, that is, by members of the Christian community itself. These texts, which emerged 20 to 40 years after Jesus' death, aim to strengthen the faith of the converts and preserve the teachings attributed to him, rather than necessarily documenting the history of the period impartially. Thus, even if there are no direct references to Jesus in the writings of Philo of Alexandria or other historians of the time, this does not definitively prove that he did not exist, but rather indicates that he was not seen as a relevant figure outside the circle of his followers while he was still alive. On the other hand, defenders of the historical existence of Jesus argue that although the accounts are not contemporary, there are references to him in 2008 texts from the late 1st century and early 2nd century, such as in the writings of Flavius Josephus, a Jewish historian, and Tacitus, a Roman historian. These accounts, although also debated regarding their authenticity and possible later interpolations by Christian copyists, are seen by many scholars as indications that Jesus did indeed exist. Thus, the absence of contemporary mentions of Jesus is not definitive proof of his non-existence, but rather an element that complicates historical analysis 
and invites reflection on the nature and impact of his life and ministry, which may have gained greater significance only in the years following his supposed lifetime. The absence of records from Rome directly about Jesus of Nazareth is an important point for some scholars who question his historical existence. According to the Gospels, Jesus was said to be a significant public figure in the region of Judea, a charismatic preacher who attracted crowds, performed miracles, confronted religious leaders, and had enough of an impact to be executed by the Roman authorities under the charge of being a threat to order. Therefore, it would be reasonable to imagine that a figure with this profile would have caught the attention of the Roman authorities of the time, who were quite meticulous in documenting important events, especially those that could represent a threat to political stability. Roman rulers typically recorded relevant events, such as revolts, important trials and executions of leaders or agitators. These administrative records could be found in letters, reports from governors, or official documents that reported suspicious activities or situations of disturbance. Considering that Jesus was allegedly judged and crucified by Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea at the time, we might expect to find some mention of this event in Roman records. However, there are no contemporary documents from Rome that directly mention Jesus of Nazareth. This includes the absence of reports from Pontius Pilate, which would have described the condemnation of a man who, according to the Gospels, was accused of proclaiming himself King of the Jews, something that Roman rulers would typically see as an attempted sedition. If a movement surrounding Jesus had been significant enough to attract large crowds and concern the religious and political authorities, it would be natural for it to appear in some Roman record. The absence of these documents leads some to question whether Jesus was really such a significant public figure during his life. Advocates of the Jesus myth thesis suggest that if Jesus were so influential and if his crucifixion had been a landmark event, the Roman rulers would have mentioned it in some way. This argument is used to suggest that perhaps Jesus was not as well known during his life and that the importance of his movement only grew later through the preaching of his followers. On the other hand, there are historians who argue that the absence of records from Rome is not necessarily proof that Jesus did not exist. They point out that many events and figures from that time were not documented in detail, especially when it came to figures considered insignificant or merely local leaders in peripheral regions like Judea. From the perspective of Roman rulers, the execution of Jesus might have been seen as an event of little political relevance something that would not warrant a detailed official record. Additionally, many documents from Rome at that time have been lost over the years, and it is possible that any mention of Jesus disappeared along with those records. Some mentions of Jesus in Roman sources only appear decades after his death, such as in the works of Tacitus and Suetonius, but these references are later and are based on what was already known about Christians. Tacitus, for example, mentions that Christ was executed during the governance of Pontius Pilate, but he writes this in the early second century, about 70 years after the events. Therefore, these sources are seen more as reflections on the existence of a Christian movement that had already spread rather than as contemporary proof that Jesus lived. Thus, the lack of direct records from Rome is not a conclusive proof of Jesus' non-existence, but it raises questions about how well-known and relevant he really was during his life. For some, this suggests that the story of Jesus may have been expanded or reinterpreted by his followers over the years. For others, it is merely a gap in historical records, something that is not uncommon when it comes to figures from the ancient world, especially those who may initially have been seen as ordinary people or local agitators. The absence of any written work directly by Jesus Christ is a point frequently raised in debates about the historicity of the figure of Jesus. Jesus is described in the Gospels as a teacher and preacher, someone who gathered crowds to teach about God, morality, and the kingdom of heaven. Given this image of a great teacher, some wonder why he did not leave behind written records, especially considering the importance his words would have for his followers and for the perpetuation of his message. First, it is important to understand that the society in which Jesus lived, first century Palestine, was predominantly oral. Most people could not read or write, and the transmission of knowledge was done through speech, memory, and oral traditions. Teachings were passed from mouth to mouth with a focus on repetition and memorization, which made it possible to preserve stories, 
doctrines and events without the need for written records. As a traveling preacher, Jesus likely fit into this context, preferring to convey his messages orally so that his followers could memorize and pass them on. Moreover, even if Jesus knew how to read and write, which cannot be entirely dismissed since, according to the Gospels, he read in synagogues, it is not guaranteed that he would have considered it necessary to leave written records. Many religious leaders of the time, even those who could read and write, did not necessarily produce texts. Jesus' priority seems to have been his mission to preach and teach directly to people, rather than creating a written legacy. After Jesus' death, it was only after several decades that his followers began to record his teachings in writing. The Gospels of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, the main documents that speak about Jesus' life, were written between 30 to 70 years after his death by authors who did not personally know him. These texts were written for Christian communities scattered throughout the Roman Empire, which needed permanent records of Jesus' teachings and accounts of his life. This time gap between Jesus' life and the moment the Gospels were written raises some doubts about the reliability of these texts as historical sources. Since oral traditions can be modified over time, there is a possibility that some events and words attributed to Jesus may have been altered, reinterpreted, or even created by his followers to meet the needs and challenges of the early Christian communities. Therefore, many historians analyze the Gospels carefully trying to identify what may have been modified over the years and what might more faithfully reflect Jesus' teachings in life. Furthermore, the lack of writings directly from Jesus makes it more difficult to distinguish between the historical figure and the religious figure. If he had left behind any written documents, this could have offered direct access to his ideas and words, allowing for a clearer insight into his intentions and thoughts. But since there are no records of this kind, Historians have to rely on the texts that came later, interpreting them in light of the traditions of the time and the needs of the early Christian communities. Still, it is important to note that many of the teachings attributed to Jesus in the Gospels are considered consistent with the Jewish traditions of the time and what one would expect from an apocalyptic preacher in first century Palestine. This suggests that even without written documents directly from Jesus, part of his message may have been preserved. However, the absence of such direct writings leaves us with a significant gap, and it is one of the reasons why the story of Jesus, especially in its details, is the subject of so much study and debate to this day. This situation creates a mystery around the historical figure of Jesus and fuels both the faith of many and the doubts of others. Paul of Tarsus, also known as Saint Paul, is a central figure in the history of Christianity. He was one of the earliest and most influential missionaries of the Christian faith, writing several letters, known as epistles, which are part of the New Testament. However, one intriguing aspect of Paul's work is that in his letters, he mentions very little about the life of Jesus during his time on earth. This lack of information about Jesus' teachings, miracles, and events has sparked discussions among scholars and believers over the years. First, it is important to understand who Paul was and what his mission entailed. He lived in the first century and began as a Pharisee who persecuted Christians, but had a dramatic conversion upon encountering a vision of the resurrected Jesus while traveling to Damascus. After this experience, Paul became a fervent defender of Christianity, traveling extensively to spread the message of Jesus. However, when writing his letters, he was more concerned with addressing theological and practical issues faced by Christian communities than with recounting Jesus' biography. Paul's epistles, such as those to the Romans, Corinthians, and Galatians, primarily deal with the message of salvation, the resurrection of Christ, and the importance of faith. Paul emphasizes that salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ, whom he describes as the Son of God. For him, the resurrection is a central point of his message. He believes that through the resurrection, Jesus overcame death and offered the possibility of eternal life to all who believe in him. This focus on spiritual matters and the resurrection is, in a way, understandable, as Paul was writing to communities facing challenges and persecution, needing to offer hope and encouragement. However, this emphasis on spiritual issues leads to a remarkable scarcity of details about the life and teachings of Jesus. For example, Paul does not mention many of Jesus' great teachings, such as the parables, 
the Sermon on the Mount, or even the miracles he performed. Instead, he speaks more about the cross and the resurrection, arguing that Jesus' sacrifice is fundamental to understanding Christianity. This raises questions about how the early Christian communities were understanding and interpreting Jesus' message. Another factor to consider is that Paul was writing to communities that already had some knowledge about Jesus, even if he did not know them personally. Therefore, he may have thought it unnecessary to recount Jesus' life since his listeners likely had a basic notion of who he was and what he had done. Additionally, the oral tradition of the time played a significant role in transmitting the stories of Jesus. Thus, communities could have accessed these stories through other preachers or sources. This absence of a detailed account of Jesus' life in Paul's letters can be seen as a characteristic of the context in which he was operating. Paul was more concerned with explaining the significance of Jesus' death and resurrection, which were essential to his theology, than with narrating the events of Jesus' life. This approach resulted in an understanding of Christianity that emphasized a personal relationship with the resurrected Jesus, rather than a detailed historical biography. Paul of Tarsus is a fundamental figure in the formation of Christianity, but his focus on theological and spiritual issues in his letters, to the detriment of details about Jesus' life, raises questions about how the early Christian communities interpreted and experienced Jesus' message. This emphasis on the resurrection and faith, rather than the events of Jesus' life, helps shape the understanding of Christianity as a religion based on faith and spiritual experience. The discussion about the similarities between the figure of Jesus Christ and other mythological figures from ancient cultures is a fascinating and complex theme. Scholars investigating these connections often point out that many elements of the narrative of Jesus have parallels in the myths of other cultures, especially regarding figures like Horus, Mithras, and Dionysus. These comparisons are important because they can provide a new perspective on how religious stories develop and transform over time. Starting with Horus, who is an Egyptian deity, his story includes a miraculous birth. Horus, the son of Isis and Osiris, is often associated with rebirth and resurrection, as Osiris, his father, was murdered and later resurrected. The myth of Horus involves many elements of struggle and triumph over evil, and his life was marked by events that can also be seen in the narratives of Jesus, such as the fight against adversarial forces. Thus, the idea of a hero who is reborn or has a special destiny seems common in various religious traditions. Another example is Mithras, a deity originating from the ancient Persian religion, who also shares notable characteristics in common with Jesus. The story of Mithras involves his birth in a cave and the performance of miraculous feats. He is often associated with light and truth, just as Jesus is seen as the light of the world. Mithras's resurrection after his death is also a feature that resonates with the Christian narrative, creating an image of salvation and redemption. Dionysus, the Greek god of wine, theater, and fertility, also presents interesting parallels. His story involves rebirth and transformation, often being linked to rituals that celebrate death and resurrection. Dionysus is portrayed as someone who brings joy and celebration, but also deals with themes of suffering and sacrifice, similar to the experiences of Jesus. Communion, an important ritual in the Christian faith, also echoes rituals of worship to Dionysus, where wine symbolizes the presence of the divine. These similarities are not merely coincidences, they reflect a broader pattern in how human stories are told. Many cultures throughout history have developed myths and legends that address universal issues such as life, death, sacrifice, and redemption. This suggests that over the centuries, narratives about gods and heroes have been shaped by shared human experiences and the need to explain phenomena that transcend human understanding. Therefore, when observing the figure of Jesus in light of myths like those of Horus, Mithras, and Dionysus, it is possible to see that many elements of his story may have been influenced by earlier traditions. Instead of viewing these parallels as evidence that Jesus did not exist, some scholars argue that this may demonstrate how Christianity incorporated and reinterpreted existing themes and narratives in a new context. These comparisons also raise questions about the originality of religious narratives. In a world where cultures interact and influence each other, it is natural for sacred stories to present similar elements, 
reflecting the concerns, hopes, and fears of each era. Thus, the connection between Jesus and earlier mythological figures can be seen as part of a rich tapestry of traditions that seek to explain the human condition and the quest for meaning and salvation. In conclusion, the comparison between the figure of Jesus Christ and other mythological figures, such as Horus, Mithras, and Dionysus, reveals the complexity of religious narratives and how they intertwine throughout history. These parallels help us understand universal human concerns about life, death, and the search for meaning. Problem of late sources refers to the issue that the Gospels, which are the primary documents narrating the life of Jesus, were written long after his death. It is estimated that these texts were composed between 40 and 100 years after what is believed to be the year of his crucifixion, which is generally dated around the year 30 of our era. This time gap raises important doubts about the accuracy and reliability of the stories told about Jesus. In a society where oral tradition predominated, stories were often transmitted from mouth to mouth before being recorded in writing. This practice of telling stories orally can lead to alterations, embellishments, and adaptations over time. The people who recounted these stories could emphasize certain aspects and omit others, depending on their beliefs or the audience they were addressing. Thus, it is natural to question how much the narratives of the Gospels were altered during this long period of oral transmission. Moreover, the literacy rate in first century Palestine was very low. Most people could not read or write, which meant that written accounts of Jesus were accessible only to a small elite. The communities that followed Jesus relied on oral tradition to convey his teachings and stories. This suggests that information could be distorted or reinterpreted as it was passed along. It is possible that important aspects of Jesus' life and teachings were misinterpreted or even forgotten, leading to a representation different from what actually occurred. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were not only written in different times, but also have distinct styles and focuses. For example, Mark is considered the oldest and shortest, while John is the latest and contains a more developed theology about the divinity of Jesus. This difference in styles may indicate that the authors had varied purposes in mind when writing, which could affect how the events were narrated. This raises the question of how faithfully the Gospels reflect what Jesus actually said or did. Another relevant point is that as Jesus' followers spread and Christianity began to establish itself as an organized religion, accounts of Jesus' life may have been shaped to meet new beliefs and theological needs. The authors of the Gospels were writing for specific communities, each with their own concerns and contexts, which could influence how they portrayed Jesus and his teachings. The lack of contemporary sources also contributes to the uncertainty. If Jesus were truly such an influential and charismatic figure, one would expect some record of his life in historical documents from his time. However, the main references to Jesus appear in Christian texts, which already have their own agenda. This raises questions about the objectivity of these accounts, as they were written in a context where the Christian faith was consolidating and expanding. Thus, the problem of late sources leads us to question the authenticity of the stories about Jesus. While many people firmly believe in the veracity of the gospel narratives, it is essential to consider the influence of time, oral tradition, and the historical circumstances that shape these sources. These questions are fundamental to understanding the complexity of the figure of Jesus and how he was perceived throughout history. The question of the existence of Jesus Christ and the authenticity of the historical sources that mention his life are complex topics debated by historians and scholars of religion. One of the frequently cited texts is by Flavius Josephus, a first-century Jewish historian. Josephus wrote a work called Antiquities of the Jews, where he references Jesus. However, many scholars believe that these mentions may have been altered or exaggerated by Christian writers in later periods. The most famous passage of Josephus that mentions Jesus is known as the Flavian Testimony. In this text, Josephus describes Jesus as a wise man who performed miracles, being the Christ, and being crucified under Pontius Pilate. For many scholars, this description is problematic. The main reason is that if we consider that Josephus was a Jew who was not a Christian, it is unlikely that he would have referred to Jesus as the Christ, which is a messianic title loaded with religious connotations that reflect the Christian belief. This suggests that this part of the text may have been added or modified by someone wanting to promote the idea that Jesus was indeed the Messiah. In addition, the writing style and language used in the Flavian testimony are different from the rest of Josephus' work. Some scholars argue that these differences are evidence that the text was interpolated, 
meaning that someone inserted parts into the original text of Josephus to serve a specific agenda. These modifications likely occurred at a time when Christianity was spreading and gaining acceptance in the Roman world. Christian writers wanted to legitimize the figure of Jesus as a great prophet and thus make him more accepted in the society of the time. The debate over the authenticity of the Flavian testimony is intense. Some experts assert that the only part that can be considered authentic is the mention of Jesus as a wise man, while the remainder, which involves the crucifixion and resurrection, would be a later addition. This view is supported by evidence showing that many ancient texts underwent editing and adaptation processes over time, especially those dealing with influential religious figures. Another point to consider is that during the early centuries of Christianity, there was significant pressure to establish a solid narrative about the life and teachings of Jesus. In a context where various sects and groups were competing for religious leadership, each trying to promote its own beliefs, stories about Jesus may have been shaped to meet these needs. Thus, references to Jesus in texts by non-Christian authors, like Josephus, become especially important for scholars trying to understand the historical figure of Jesus, as well as for those who argue that these texts were manipulated. These questions about the Flavian testimony and other historical references to Jesus reveal the complexity of research on his life. Many historians believe that, although there are references to Jesus, certainty about his life and teachings is difficult to establish due to these possible alterations and the lack of contemporary documentation. This discussion is fundamental to understanding Christianity and how it developed throughout history, showing that the line between history and faith is often thin and complex. The Gospels of the New Testament are the main sources that narrate the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, and they are considered sacred by millions of people worldwide. However, when analyzing them closely, many scholars note that there are various inconsistencies between these texts. These discrepancies raise questions about the historical accuracy of the accounts and the way Jesus' figure has been presented over time. One of the most notable inconsistencies concerns the genealogy of Jesus. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke provide two different lineages. Matthew traces Jesus' descent from Abraham through David and mentions 14 generations in each of the three parts of his list. On the other hand, Luke presents a different genealogy, which reaches Jesus through a different line of ancestors and includes names not found in Matthew. This difference in genealogy can create confusion about Jesus' lineage, especially since descent from David was an important characteristic for Jews who expected a Messiah from that lineage. Another point of contention refers to the birth of Jesus. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke have distinct accounts of the event. Matthew discusses the visit of the Magi, the family's flight to Egypt, and the slaughter of the innocents, while Luke narrates the story of the announcement of the birth to the shepherds and the presentation of Jesus at the temple. The difference in emphasis and details in each account makes it challenging to form a cohesive narrative about Jesus' birth. For example, Matthew does not mention Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem, while Luke states that they traveled there due to a census. This census, in fact, is not mentioned in historical records, raising further doubts about the accuracy of the accounts. In addition to the discrepancies regarding genealogy and birth, the narratives about the resurrection of Jesus also present inconsistencies. Each of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, describes the resurrection of Jesus, but each does so differently. For example, the number of women who visited the tomb varies among the accounts. In Matthew, two women are mentioned, while in Mark, there are three. Luke mentions that several women were present, and John focuses only on Mary Magdalene. Moreover, the interactions that occurred after the resurrection vary from one gospel to another, leaving readers confused about who saw Jesus first and what his instructions were after the resurrection. These inconsistencies do not necessarily mean that the gospels are entirely false, but they raise questions about how the stories were told and reinterpreted over time. The Gospels were written in different contexts by authors who had distinct purposes and varied audiences. This may have led to embellishments of the accounts or an emphasis on certain aspects of Jesus' life, depending on the message each author wanted to convey. Additionally, the oral tradition, which was a common practice before the writing of the Gospels, may have contributed to the variation in the accounts. Stories about Jesus were passed down from generation to generation, and each storyteller may have added their own interpretations or dramatic elements. This is natural in any oral tradition, but raises doubts about the historical accuracy of the narratives that eventually were recorded. Therefore, 
When considering the Gospels as historical documents, it is important to acknowledge these inconsistencies and understand that they are part of a broader context. The figure of Jesus is complex and multifaceted, and the different narratives reflect the diversity of beliefs and experiences of early Christians. The issue of the absence of a worship tradition for Jesus in the early years of Christianity is an intriguing topic that generates debate among historians and scholars. When we analyze the early Christians, especially in the decades immediately following Jesus' death, we see that the image they had of him was very different from the one that later consolidated in the Gospels. Initially, Jesus' followers did not seem to worship him in the same way that, for example, one would worship a human leader or a king. Instead, they focused on his message and the spiritual experience he provided. Right after the crucifixion of Jesus, his disciples and closest followers were more concerned with understanding and spreading his teachings than establishing a formal cult around him. The central idea of the Christian faith was about salvation, the afterlife, and the promise that Jesus had resurrected. For them, the presence of Jesus was felt spiritually rather than necessarily physically. Instead of venerating a historical figure, they were more interested in what Jesus represented, a new way of life, hope, and connection with God. This focus on a spiritual Christ suggests that in the early days of Christianity, the worship of Jesus did not resemble the traditional cult of other deities or charismatic leaders of the time. The early Christians were a minority within a society that had various religions and cults, many of which were associated with deities that had elaborate myths, worship rituals, and dedicated temples. In contrast, the early Christian community does not seem to have developed an organized set of worship practices solely directed toward Jesus. The lack of a formal cult is evidenced by the way early Christian texts were written and transmitted. The first Gospels were composed in a context where the memories and teachings of Jesus were more important than the figure of Jesus as a God. What stands out in Paul's letters, for example, is a theological approach that emphasizes resurrection and the spiritual relationship of believers with Christ, rather than focusing on Jesus' earthly life. Paul talks more about how followers should live in relation to Jesus than about his biography. Additionally, the early Christians lived in a hostile environment, facing persecution and resistance from Jewish and Roman authorities. This situation may have led to a prioritization of the spiritual aspects of faith over the worship of a historical figure. The belief in Jesus' resurrection and his divine presence seemed sufficient for the early Christians, who viewed Jesus as a spiritual guide and not merely as a historical leader. Over time, as Christianity spread and became more organized, the figure of Jesus began to be venerated in a more formal manner. Worship traditions and doctrine developed, leading to the worship we know today. This evolution suggests that initially, Jesus may have been seen more as a mythical or spiritual figure than as a concrete human leader. This transition reflects how beliefs and practices can evolve over time, adapting to the needs and contexts of faith communities. The absence of a worship tradition in the early days of Christianity sheds light on the complexities of Christian identity formation and invites us to consider how spirituality and belief can emerge in times of uncertainty and transformation. In the first century, Palestine was a place filled with political and religious turmoil, with various figures presenting themselves as messiahs or spiritual leaders. Many people were dissatisfied with Roman rule and hoped for a savior to liberate them and bring about a new era of peace and justice. In this context, various preachers emerged, announcing the arrival of the kingdom of God and proclaiming messages of transformation and change. Among them were individuals like John the Baptist who called people to repentance. There were also others who opposed Roman authority and tried to gather followers around their ideas. Many of these preachers were charismatic and attracted crowds, making the idea of a messiah quite popular. This created a fertile environment for the proliferation of stories about people performing miracles, teaching about God's love, and proclaiming a new social and spiritual order. When examining the story of Jesus of Nazareth, some scholars argue that he may have become a figure constructed from various influences and traditions. It is possible that his teachings, miracles, and even events from his life were shaped by these other messianic figures already present in the Jewish culture of the time. For instance, the idea of a savior who dies and resurrects is a common theme in various religious traditions predating Jesus. Many ancient cultures had gods or heroes who went through a cycle of death and rebirth, such as Osiris in Egypt or Dionysus in Greece. These stories may have influenced the narrative about Jesus giving him characteristics and events that resonated with popular beliefs. Moreover, the search for a messiah during Jesus' time was not an isolated phenomenon. 
The Jews were waiting for a liberator to help them rid themselves of Roman oppression, and this expectation generated a variety of figures who could be seen as potential messiahs. Many of them ended up being executed or killed by the authorities, but their stories and teachings continued to circulate among the people. The figure of Jesus, with his teachings about love, forgiveness, and social justice, could have been an adaptation or synthesis of several of these messianic figures and their messages. Therefore, the idea that Jesus of Nazareth may have been a composite character arises from a historical context rich in charismatic leaders and messianism. Over time, these influences may have intertwined in the oral and written traditions that eventually gave rise to the Gospels. Thus, the narrative of Jesus could have absorbed elements from other stories and figures of the time, creating an image that, while strongly resonating with the values and beliefs of the early Christian community, may not correspond exactly to a single historical individual. This perspective suggests that, instead of being a unique event in history, the life of Jesus can be seen as part of a broader phenomenon of hope and messianic expectation, reflecting the longings and spirituality of a people seeking meaning and liberation in a tumultuous world. Therefore, the historical Jesus, if he existed, may be a collage of various influences shaped by the culture and religiosity of the time. The figure of Jesus of Nazareth can be understood as a reflection of the messianic expectations of the first century, involving influences from various religious traditions and leaders of the time. This analysis opens the door for a deeper dialogue about the origins of Christianity and its impact on society. To delve further into this fascinating topic, I invite you to watch part one, where we explore other aspects of this discussion. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay updated on all the content we are preparing for you.